Now there's no excuse for not restoring or updating that memorable piece of furniture stored away in the attic, or that old house project because it's missing a piece. There's no need to search antique stores or salvage yards for that missing hardware or applique either. You don't even need to find a foundry to produce that unique metal pole because you can easily duplicate any missing piece in metal, wood, or marble, providing you have a piece to copy with materials from the company whose motto is reproduce anything. The technique used is called cold casting and it's surprisingly simple. To begin with, we assemble the materials that we needed along with the part we wanted to copy. This was an engraved antique brass knob from a set of doors that had one missing, as well as a bureau pole from an 1870 maple veneer bureau. The materials included were aqua clear resin, a water clear polyurethane resin, cast ease and an opaque ivory colored resin, and Moldrite 25, a two-part silicone rubber, all three products bought from Environmoles. We also used Environmoles bronze, brass, wood, and marble casting media. In addition, we required a gram scale to weigh out the silicone. We also needed a few 16 ounce and 32 ounce cups, some mixing sticks, and a glue gun. Before we continue, we must talk about eliminating air bubbles. Air bubbles in molding and casting materials will cause unsightly surface blemishes. Professional mold makers use vacuum chambers and pressure pots to drive out the air. However, satisfactory results can be achieved through the vibrating of your materials as they set. And you can create a simple vibrating table by attaching a vibrating source to the table leg. Here we fixed an electric sander to the leg. And when the sander is turned on, their vibrations are strong enough to lower the coefficient of friction in the various casting and mold making liquids to allow any trapped air to rise to the surface and dissipate. It's important to use such a table in making your hardware duplicates. Small parts tend to trap more air than larger ones. And this is especially true when you cast in clear resin. If you don't have a system to reduce trapped air, you will have unsightly air bubbles making what you hoped would be water clear very cloudy. To begin, we used a glue gun to attach the original knob to the bottom of a container. There should be at least an inch distance between the outside of the container and the closest part of the knob. Now we are ready to mix this silicone rubber to create the rubber mold. Mold right 25 is mixed at a ratio of 10 parts of A to one part of B, and for this we used a gram scale. If the silicone is not accurately measured, the material will not set. We estimated the amount of part A needed to cover the knob to a depth of a half inch higher than the highest part of the knob. This came out to be about 10 grams of part A. We then put a clean cup on the scale and poured out one-tenth of the amount we poured out for part A. In this case, it was one gram of part B. We can't forget to account for the weight of the container when we measure either. To account for the weight of the containers, we place the empty container on the scale and press the tar weight button. This adjusts for the weight of the container and the scale now reads zero. If there is no tar weight button, we would have to weigh the container and then subtract it from the total weight. When the Moldrite 25 is mixed to an even color without marbling, we are ready to pour it into the mold. To further eliminate the possibility of air bubbles, Moles advise us to pour an exaggerated height in a very narrow stream by squeezing the cup to make a narrow spout. We also poured in one spot allowing the Moldrite 25 to envelop the knob. This pushes out more air. We poured enough to cover the knob one half inch deeper than the height. The good thing is that if we were short material, not to worry, we can simply mix up more Moldrite 25 without having done any harm to our mold making. Once we finish pouring, we place the container on our vibrating table and allowed it to be vibrated for about 30 minutes or so. Moldrite 25 takes about three hours to solidify before it's ready to be demolded. When the rubber's set, 
we removed the finished mold from the container. We had to cut open the container to do so. Then, to extract the knob from the rubber, we turned the mold over so that the location where we hot glued the knob to the bottom of the container was facing us. Then we took a sharp razor knife and carefully sliced down opposite sides of the mold, about two-thirds of the way. Once both sides had been cut, we spread open the mold like a clamshell and removed the knob. We inspected the mold for any loose particles and then closed it using a rubber band to keep it tightly shut. We have now created our first finished mold. At this point, we have to season the mold by baking it for three hours at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This strengthens it and evaporates any residual alcohol. The, the alcohol, if left in the mold, could interfere with the surface of the casting material. In addition, a cast sets better in a warm mold, so it serves three purposes. To create the brass knob casting, we poured out equal parts of A and part B of aqua clear, water clear resin. It is just a simple matter of comparing the levels of each in two cups and making certain they are at the same level. In a third cup, we spooned out an equal amount of the 325 mesh, that's a very fine grind, of brass powder, so we had three cups all filled to the same level. And since AquaClear dries fairly rapidly, especially in a warm mold, that's about five minutes, we will mix about half the brass powder in the part A and the other half in part B. Once we mix both cups well, we combine one into the other. It doesn't matter which. Then we mix thoroughly again for about 45 seconds. To start our pour, we remove the mold from the oven, careful it was hot, and carefully poured in the brass mixture until it was filled to the top. The casting was placed on the vibrating table to be vibrated as we did when we first made our mold. Since this sets quickly, we found that it only took about three to four minutes of vibration. And once it was set to the touch, we waited another 30 minutes before attempting to demold. Demolding was fairly straightforward. We removed the rubber band and spread the mold apart to pop out our finished casting. It was almost perfect in spite of a bit of flashing. That was easy to clean up using our X-Acto knife. We also cleaned up any evidence of seam lines this way. With a little elbow grease and some triple O steel wool, we polished a knob to remove the resin and expose the brass. We could have also used a buffing wheel for even shinier results. The finished product was an extraordinary copy of the original brass knob. It's very difficult to distinguish it from the original, with one exception. The original had a darker patina from age. A little time oxidation will remove any such differences, but in the meantime, you could take a little black shoe polish to, to achieve the same results. The results were so spectacular that we decided to replace all our kitchen cabinet hardware with these 19th century brass reproductions. We were able to create 18 more brass knobs from the same mold with the same detail.